And so uh, I'm going to go through uh, the basic file structure of a, a WordPress block theme and uh, answer questions along the way and sort of just give an overview of uh, how it's constructed, what's necessary, uh, what are nice to haves, what are uh, need to haves, and so on. And so I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen. Um, if somebody wouldn't mind, or a couple people uh, just in the chat, give me a thumbs up if you can see everything uh, at that point, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm going to share screen. There we go. Um, I'm going to try to also have the chat off to the side so that way I can see uh, everything great. Uh, so like I said, uh, this is the anatomy of a block WordPress theme. We're going to be using Frost, uh, our WP Engine theme, uh, as sort of the, the proof of concept of what we're talking about here. And so uh, for those of you who are well aware, uh, the Gutenberg editor is sort of the new uh, came out five-ish years ago and is slowly being worked on and iterated over these years. Uh, and it sets up a new paradigm on how WordPress is going to be used, how content and presentation of a website will be uh, produced. And through that sort of is the metamorphosis of the way WordPress themes themselves work. Uh, historically, WordPress themes have been PHP files, uh, some H a little bit of HTML uh, and CSS. And uh, this new sort of paradigm of building uh, WordPress themes is somewhat similar, but uh, uh, quite a bit different. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, again, uh, I'm going to drop the link for those who may have, may have missed it. Uh, this is the link to the Frost WordPress theme. And so you can kind of, as I'm going through these slides, just pop that open and kind of follow along and see the, the real world files of the Frost theme. So the first thing I'm going to do is just talk about the, the basic theme structure for Block WordPress theme. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, there are several things, and we'll go through um, them systematically and kind of talk them through. Uh, but the first thing you'll see here is uh, these sort of lines here. These are the folders uh, that are included in a traditional uh, uh, WordPress theme that's block-based. And so you've got an assets folder, which houses... Uh, any fonts that are bundled with the theme, uh, any images that might be used maybe in patterns. Uh, and then and then if there are some, you know, if there's a JavaScript file, uh, you would, you know, include like a JS folder inside the assets of uh, the theme. Uh, we've got a functions PHP file um, that has uh, historically uh, been a mainstay in any WordPress theme. And the functions uh, do several things. I'll kind of go through the frost. Uh, functions file as well. There is what's called a parts folder. Uh, it was called originally template parts, but they've sort of truncated that. Uh, and there are parts of a theme. Uh, header and footer are the two main uh, parts. And there's a few other examples as we go through. I'll kind of talk through them as well. Uh, inside of a block-based theme is what's called a patterns folder. And uh, through this detection uh, of a patterns folder, any PHP files that are inside of that that are um, basically uh, representative of every pattern that's included in a theme. Uh, there's, again, some uh, some header code that's required for this to sort of work. But basically, uh, WordPress scans the theme to see if there's any patterns that are included. And these are the ones that are served up in the um, either the site editor under the patterns tab or uh, in the block inserter where you can insert a pattern. It scans the theme and the patterns that are found in there. So like a header PHP would be an example of testimonials. Um, great question, Lisa. Let me just get through this list and then I'll go back and answer that. Uh, obviously every theme has a screenshot. That's pretty self-explanatory. It's a 1200 by 900 uh, screenshot.png file, basically just sort of a snapshot of what the theme looks like when activated. Uh, it's used for the uh, those themes that are in the wordpress.org uh, repository. They show the little screenshots, uh, as well as when you're in the appearance uh, page and the WP admin uh, just shows the picture of the theme. Uh, style sheet, like all themes, um, black base themes have a style sheet. Uh, that has gotten significantly less as theme JSON has become more of a thing. Uh, historically, uh, all themes in the styles just all lived within a style sheet. And uh, with the introduction of the block editor, things got a little hairy because generally those style sheets have um, also um, 
those style sheets were used sort of for the front end, but then the back end also needed representation. And so you had instances where classes didn't align or you had a need for two files and that kind of, it just got convoluted. And so theme JSON will solve that. And I'll get to that when we get down there. Um, there's a new feature with WordPress block themes called style variations. And what this, this does is it allows you, it's kind of Lisa to your question, a little bit like a child theme, but not really because it allows you to specify different uh, styles and settings inside a, a separate theme JSON fo uh, fo uh, file. And it allows you to offer up like skins or color schemes or whatever in a way that's easy and a point and click. And I'll also show how that works as well. Uh, there are uh, templates. Uh, this is very necessary. Uh, historically with WordPress, they've been PHP files, uh, generally things of, you know, page and single and archive and search and front page and stuff like that. Those are the templates that are within the theme. Uh, and then, of course, there's the theme JSON file, which is probably the most powerful um, and maybe hard to understand or easy to break uh, file that's found within a WordPress block theme. So this is the general structure. Again, you can see it basically sort of aligns with what we've got here in the actual Frost theme. And then you can click through and see each one. Uh, I'll go through here. Uh, so assets, like I mentioned, um, uh, most themes come packaged now because of sort of GDPR. Uh, instead of calling like a Google fonts thing through like a function, uh, themes now are packaging and bundling these fonts. Uh, and I realize, uh, at least I get back to your question uh, here a second. And so uh, in the assets folder, you would have a, a folder called fonts, and that's where you would maybe um, put the, the you know, in this case, Frost uses the outfit font in the variable format. Uh, WAF2 is, I think, the recommended, although I think TTF may work. Uh, and so inside of that folder, you've got the font, the text file, which is just the license, the OFL. Uh, generally, WordPress requires you to just include the license file in there, just saying that it's open source and available to be distributed. And so any font files that you would want would go in a fonts folder. Uh, similar with the images, again, Frost and some of the other themes that I work on uh, have patterns that sort of put in placeholder images. And so uh, if you wanted to include them, uh, you would just put them inside of like the images folder. And then if there was a JavaScript file or two, uh, that you were using for any you know animations or anything sort of within the theme to help get it to um, what you wanted to do. Recently, I updated one of my themes to have sort of like a little bit of a cool sticky header deal. Uh, and so I've got what's called an effects.js, which gets housed here in this assets. I'm going to scroll back up and just make sure um, I get back to Lisa's question, which was the difference between parts and patterns. Um, and this is sometimes uh, synonymous because often what you'll what you'll see is, um, especially with header and footer, if you and I'll actually do this just to show you. So if you go into the parts, these are the parts that are um, used. If you click on header, all, you'll see that the header part actually just calls in the header pattern. And so it's a little bit tricky in the sense of they're kind of the same, kind of not really. Uh, recently, WordPress is trying to like really sort of um, consolidate the vernacular. And so uh, in essence, template parts are actually patterns or can be patterns. And so I think at some point we might see um, sort of that being done away with. Uh, but for now, um, and I'll go into really quickly a template so you can see this in action. Uh, so this code up here at the top is basically inside of the single file saying, hey, go grab the header template part. Uh, we want to call it header. We want to apply a class name to the output of the HTML. And similarly down here, you'll see that there's a footer. And so it's kind of like PHP uh, get header, PHP get footer, um, sort of the same way from, from the classic themes back in the day. Yeah, the, the parts calling patterns is, is sort of, I sometimes wonder um, outside of header and footer, and th there's reasons why header and footer template parts existed. Um, when you go into the site editor, you're able to easily swap out headers um, e easier because of the way the parts registration happens. And so a uh, little bit of a, some caveats there uh, as well. But uh, so this was the assets folder. And again, uh, ask questions along the way. I've got the chat open. And so I'm happy to sort of look over and watch. And if there's something I'm talking about, you have a question about or want some clarification, feel free. 
Um, and so speaking of parts, uh, most themes have at least a header and a footer part. Now this is registered in theme JSON. I'll, I'll walk through, uh, down further how that's actually done. Uh, and some other themes I've seen parts like sidebar and comments can also be, um, done by way of parts. And so therefore like inside of a single file, you would have, you know, all of the code that makes up the content and then maybe a line that calls in the sidebar. And what that does is it sort of gives you a, an isolated screen inside of, uh, the site editor where you can go in and edit the contents of that part. Uh, I'll get to that also in, in a bit. And so I generally only stick to header and footer when it comes to parts just because, um, but some of the other examples, like I said, comments or sidebar or, you know, notification bar or something like that. Uh, and again, uh, we have a, a, one of my colleagues, Sam, she talks about, um, there being many ways to WordPress and this is true. You, you don't necessarily need to put some of these things as parts. You can just put the code in the theme file and that works also. So, um, that would be it now. Patterns are like the meat and potatoes of uh, many WordPress block themes. And so, like I mentioned, um, and I'll click over to the Frost. Uh, so we are here in the Frost root and you'll see a patterns uh, folder uh, and you'll see a slew of patterns here. And I'll pop one open, uh, just called product box. Uh, and so inside of this file, you'll see this up here. This is the, the pattern registration header. And so this does a couple of things. It determines like what's the title and what the slug and the category for the pattern. And then below that, you have basically the code that makes up the pattern. And so uh, patterns are going to be a lot of how WordPress themes are built moving forward because uh, part of the beauty of the block and site editor is that you can go in and easily add sections of a website with one click. Uh, and patterns do just that. And so, uh, as you can see, just some different examples, um, typical things that you would see or have a need to insert into a site. Like if you had a services page and you wanted to easily create a pricing table, if your theme provided a pattern for that, you could literally insert that pattern in with one click and then make any customizations that you might have. And so, uh, patterns are, and will continue to be, um, a very integral part of WordPress black theme and black based design, uh, moving forward. So, uh, as I also mentioned, uh, inside of a theme, there doesn't need to be, but their theme could have what's called a styles folder. Uh, and what this does is, um, this as an example, let me just go to the frost website. So in this case, style variations are uh, lightweight variations of the base look, right? And so out of the box, Frost is blue, um, but you can have, um, as I show here, uh, basically JSON files that, uh, you know, sort of serve in the same way like a child theme would in the sense of like, hey, what's different or what would you like to override on the main uh, theme JSON file? And so each one of these like has its own color scheme registration. And so by activating that style variation, which I'll walk through later, you can have things out of the box. Like if you, for instance, you wanted the red variation, you would just click the red one and then it would just load um, that style variation code in addition to the base. And so uh, colors generally, you know, maybe you want to have different font styles and stuff like that. So there's different ways variations can be used. Uh, generally not something that you would turn over to a client more so for product builders. Um, uh, yes. So Robert, just like you, you said, um, in, in the case of frost, I just made it easy. I just used the same font and just, just did different color variations. Uh, but, uh, 2023 last year, uh, was the first WordPress default theme that leveraged style variations. And in that case, not only was it color changes, but like different variations had different, um, fonts and different spacing and different sizing and stuff like that. So anything that's in theme JSON, uh, that you have a style or a setting can be sort of altered by way of a variation. So you are hundred percent correct. Uh, so Steve, you asked, do patterns have to be PHP files? Um, generally yes. Uh, and especially in the way that the auto detection works with the, having the patterns folder, it scans literally for the PHP files. 
uh, even though most of the code in the PHP file is just the HTML. Uh, one of the reasons patterns exist, and especially for things like, like a 404 page, uh, it allows for sort of the translation to take place. HTML just doesn't allow you to do things that are like for localization. And so um, PHP files allow for that, which is why people started using patterns for things like the 404 page and stuff like that. So you could have people come in with the localized uh, version and, and do things in different uh, languages. Uh, so Rabin, uh, yes, that's a little bit of a snafu. The only thing you don't like about it is that all of your custom CSS is lost. So if you have what he's talking about, uh, if you loaded Frost and then you went into the additional CSS, that's part of global styles and customize some things. And then, and this is probably more a bug than anything else. Uh, and then switched a different variation and then switched back to blue or sort of reset it. Uh, you lose those changes. Uh, I've I've done that before during Frost demos, and it's kind of annoying, uh, and probably something that I've put on my list of things to like at least discuss with some folks there uh, to see if there's a better way around that. So um, good call out, and and again, generally these types of things, the variations, really more for just people who are building products and want to offer up different flavors of way to do things. Uh, and not really something you would just turn over to a client because there's, you know, it's all custom at that point anyway. So, okay. So, so we talked about the style variations uh, and then the templates. There's a, a folder within um, backing up. You know, you've got your templates folder and these just house all the HTML files for um, the templates that are um, part of your theme. Generally, you've got a 404 just because um, archive, index, and you know author and category are all sort of interchangeable. It's it, they follow it basically follows the the WordPress template hierarchy. Uh, obviously, you want a page uh, template, you want a single file, uh, and then there's some custom templates you'll see here in Frost. Uh, I created a custom template called No Title, which is exactly what it states. Uh, it's just a way to um, publish a page that doesn't have a title output. So you could do things like home pages and whatnot. Uh, and then like a blank file, which is literally a blank file. So like if you wanted to create like a link page and have no header, no footer or any kind of landing page, you could just use that template. Uh, and so templates, uh, and you could put as many templates in the, fo in the folder as you want. Uh, if you're doing things like WooCommerce, uh, you can do things like you know, product dash, whatever, um, similar to the way you would have in a PHP based uh, theme. And so you can create post templates, page templates, and there's sort of a registration that I'll get to when we get to the theme JSON section. Uh, and again, the outside of all of those folders, there's these basic files, um, which are all generally pretty explanatory. Um, if you have a theme in the repo, you, you need a readme file. So that's part of it. The style sheet, theme JSON file, uh, screenshot, and functions. So I'm going to go into, and I'll see, Lisa, you have a question there. Uh, before I get to theme JSON, I'll answer that. So a template could primarily call patterns. Uh, yes, uh, very much so. Um, I don't know if... <laughs> The functions file is generally required because it does a couple of things um, like load styles in the editor um, and things like that. It The functions file is what tells the front and back end editors to um, look at what's in the style sheet and render it in both places. And so um, it, it's not necessary, but it does a couple things. Um, I'll just open up the Frost one just to just talk through this uh, as well. So in the Frost theme, for instance, uh, I'll just sort of copy this code. This is like the setup. And what it does is it <clears throat> prepares the theme for localization. Uh, it also says, hey, here's the style sheet. So load that in the editor, both front and back. Uh, in this case, I remove uh, core block patterns from being loaded just because I want to just serve up the theme patterns and nothing else. And so you do you can do things like this. Uh, this would be from the front end and enqueues the style sheet. So uh, unless you have no styles, and that's also a possibility, uh, you would need a functions file to do that. Uh, and then even further down here, you'll see Frost registers what's called some block styles. And so 
Uh, you can kind of create special styles for certain blocks uh, that do certain things. And so you would need the functions file to do that. Uh, and then down here, uh, there's a function that creates new categories that are shown in the patterns screen in the site editor. Uh, so WordPress has, you know, 10 or 15 sort of predetermined uh, pattern categories. But if you have like ones that aren't part of uh, that group, you can specify your own. Uh, and so again, you would need a functions file to do that. Uh, so Jeremy calls out, uh, child theme does not require a functions file. That is correct. Uh, child themes generally, I think Lisa, you had a question about this earlier. Uh, child themes are basically anything you want to either override or add to the parent gets done in a child theme. So uh, for instance, if everything you have is in the parent functions file, you don't need to have a child theme functions file unless you wanted it to do some more things in addition to uh, the parent. And you, these are uh, child themes are generally created to uh, avoid overwriting of updated things. So like, in other words, if I download Frost and I want to customize some stuff for a client, uh, I'll do it in a child theme. That way, when I push out an update to Frost, and you get an update that there's a new version, it does not wipe out your changes. And so a lot of people house their customizations in a child theme. It's been that way sort of in PHP-based themes, but also in block themes. Um, okay, so theme JSON. This is where things... Uh, and, and I encourage you to go back to the Frost uh, GitHub and click on theme JSON. Uh, you can see a lot of things going on there. I'm going to kind of just talk through some things at high levels. Uh, and I realize there's a lot to digest here and a lot of different ways to do things. Uh, and so inside of theme JSON at the highest level, there's generally four main categories of things you can do within theme JSON. Uh, one is register your custom templates. In other words, things that you uh, have in addition to archive and single and page. Uh, it allows you to specify a lot of settings here. Um, and I'll go through a few of these in further slides uh, where you can set up things that are specific to blocks and color. You can create custom settings. You can specify the layout um, options. And I'll talk through some of that, spacing and typography. And then there's another section inside of theme JSON where you can determine styles of things. And the way theme JSON works is what you uh, put into theme JSON, what it does is it sort of matches up to it, the GUI, right, of the site or the block editor, where when you specify some of these things like colors and font sizes or whatever, you do it in theme JSON. And then um, when you go into the, the block editor or the site editor, where you can have these point and click options, they're populated by the things that you specify here in the theme JSON file. Um, so you've got styles, you can style on a per block basis, you can determine colors, you, there's some elements, things like links and buttons and headings, uh, where you can specify sort of like what the default is for your theme, uh, some more spacing and typography controls. And then there's another section here that registers uh, the template parts. And so uh, clicking through here. As an example, this is sort of shorthand, but what this is, is this is the custom template section. And so this here tells the theme, uh, hey, we've got some custom templates that are included in the theme. Uh, I alluded to them earlier, blank and no title. Uh, those are, I'll click through. They're in the templates directory. Uh, they're not part of the template hierarchy, so WordPress can't auto detect them. And so for instance, like this no title, this is just basically the code for a page without a title. And so uh, this theme JSON basically says, hey, this theme is registering these two things, make them available in this case for both pages and posts. Uh, you can um, set that to nothing. And I think by default, it does both. Uh, if you have custom post types, you can specify or omit them here. And so this basically will, uh, when you go in and create a page or post in the templates section where there's usually like a drop down for like page templates, it'll basically populate that with the option to use that template. So uh, registering them in theme JSON, referring to the ones that exist inside of the templates folder, uh, calling them sort of, uh, you know, title and name, whatnot. 
uh, color. Now, this is another uh, big part of theme JSON. Uh, so there's two things here. One, you can determine um, WordPress obviously has its own opinionated color system, duotone filters and gradients, and a default palette. And so theme JSON, you can set all of those to false, which means I want the theme to just set up the color system and do nothing else. Uh, and so uh, I believe uh, most of the stuff I work on just turns that all off. It's just extra stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be seen. This is just kind of WordPress out of the box. And so theme JSON sets those to true or false, which means uh, load them or don't load them. And then you see down here, uh, duo tone gradients and palette. I'll click through and you'll see it allows you to determine the color system that is then matched up to uh, the settings inside of, you know, when you go to like change the color of, of something, what you see in that admin interface is what is populated by what you set up here. And so for an example, uh, this is the code. Again, all of this is inside of the theme JSON file here. Uh, some of this is just shorthand, so it fits on the screen, you know, so just kind of clicking through here, scrolling down, you'll see there's there's stuff in there. And so in this case, we're setting the duotone filters. There's going to be two of them. And obviously, you can see uh, you can specify the colors, what you want things to be called. Uh, the slug is ultimately what's used as part of the CSS variable. Uh, and so a lot of this is sort of... Um, redundant. And so similarly, if you want to set up a color palette, uh, what this does, and let me just click through here so you can see what I'm referring to. So if I want to change the color of the text, this right here, this is my theme palette. And so you don't see the WordPress core ones because I have them set to off. And so in this case, Frost registers a base color, a contrast color, a primary color, a secondary color, and a neutral color. And so what this does is it allows people who are building products or client sites to say, hey, these are the colors that are within the theme. You could have as many as you want. I generally like to keep them on one line because it just makes a lot of sense. And so that gets done here. This is a little bit of shorthand, but this just shows, you know, you have to give the hex code. You got to name it something. The slug again is used for the CSS variable output. Uh, and so generally I just try to keep it all the same thing. Uh, okay, so uh, also included in theme JSON is the ability to change the layout size. And so you'll see here there are two parameters. Uh, content size is basically inside of a page or a post what you want the content width to be. Uh, depending on which theme you download, this can range from 400 to 800 to 1,000 to whatever. Uh, I generally like 640, sort of a personal preference. Uh, and then there's the wide size parameters. So like, for instance, there are groups or the ability to stretch an image, like sort of pull it outside of the content area. And so uh, wide size is sort of what you set that up to be. Now, this is just for the default. You can, on a per group basis, customize that to be anything you want, 960 or whatever in that particular instance. And so, uh, but this is just like, what is the default for these two? Um, okay, so Lisa, getting back to your question. So a new template requires two things. Yes, you have to create the template, add it to your templates directory, but also call it in theme JSON. Um, that way it knows to load that template as an available template. Um, would it be accurate that a theme should have very little in the... Uh, generally speaking, yes. Uh, when theme JSON first came out, I basically went through a 1200 line style sheet and just cherry picked every uh, instance that I could. Hey, this there's a setting now for, you know, an H2 font size, color, text decoration, things like that, where you I slowly kind of methodically removed stuff and styles and added the support for it in theme JSON. Uh, and so not every block or... Um, not every block has support for every kind of style that a CSS file could house. And so there's probably always going to be some need for uh, style.css. Uh, maybe it's some custom things. Maybe you're doing things with body classes and stuff like that. Uh, but for the most part, it's maybe more than 50-50 now, maybe 60, 70, 80% of the styles are now defined in theme JSON. Uh, and the beauty behind theme JSON is that it parses 
what's in there. And it uses that to, to, to cover the output. In other words, the front end styling, but also the editor styling. So you don't have a need to define them in two different style sheets anymore. Uh, and so theme JSON sort of handles both sides, which is really, really helpful. Uh, also in theme JSON is the ability to set up what's called step spacing, uh, spacing presets. Uh, so for instance, I'll just go in here uh, in this particular slide, mainly padding and margin. You'll see that this group block has sort of this ability to sort of slide this. I generally use t-shirt sizing, extra small, small, medium, large. Uh, and I can set the the steps. Like every step is a 20 pixel jump. And so for instance, extra large is a hundred pixels. This goes down to 80. And of course you can always just untoggle that and write whatever you want in there. Uh, and so for instance, uh, I've specified this and it also handles the clamp thing, right? So like if you have a hero section and you want to add a hundred pixels of spacing, but when you shrink that down on mobile, hundred pixels is a lot and takes up a lot of screen. Maybe you want that to sort of be a little bit more intrinsic uh, in the way it responds. And so uh, in this case, I generally sort of clamp it down. And so um, you can kind of determine your own, your own system. It's a lot of the beauty here with block-based WordPress themes is that uh, the theme author can determine the system using, you know, the, the value, the pixel value or, percentage based things. And so I have a certain way of doing things. It's not right or wrong. It's just the way I prefer to do it. Uh, and so like in this case, my spacing is just 20 pixels, 20, 40, 60, 80, hundred. And so, um, Natin, is it important to add a theme JSON file for everything? Yes, because theme JSON does all of the things that we're talking about. And without it, um, you're almost not talking about a block based theme at that point. Cause there's so much that it does and so much that it handles now. There's an argument that says you don't need to have all of these things in a block-based theme, um, but there's just a lot of benefit to it. So uh, another example is the typography section. Uh, so there are a couple of just sort of simple settings here. You can you know, set whether there's a drop cap in the paragraph or not. That's not a huge deal. Um, in this case, uh, I've set fluid typography. WordPress has sort of a uh, a clamp system in place for um, solving responsive typography. And so setting that to, to true would allow that to kick in. Uh, and these are the two things that we'll cover here also. Um, font families and font sizes. Uh, as we scroll down here uh, in that section here, and again, you can go back to kind of just looking at this section here, lines 190 or so. Uh, and so what theme JSON does is uh, this is the registration of the fonts. Uh, not only does it populate the dropdown menu for what font you want to use, um, but it also sort of does the font facing for you. And so in this case, uh, because we're packaging the font, you have to tell theme JSON where the font uh, file is located and some other parameters, for instance, the font weight range and stuff like that, what you want to call it. Uh, the slug is sort of for the CSS variable piece of it, uh, font family, obviously sort of this, this should make some sense. Uh, and so you can register multiple fonts and in the case of, uh, frost, uh, we've got outfit here. Um, but I also recently added, uh, the, uh, system font option for people who just don't want to load a Google font and they just want to use system fonts, uh, for whatever reason. And so. Uh, you know, but you could register, you know, and package 10 different Google fonts here if you want. So uh, that's one of the things that theme JSON allows you to do is sort of set up um, these fonts um, and registering font sizes. Uh, you can, uh, as I, I'll go into here, you can see uh, I'm here in a heading block in right here, this font size. These are all of the fonts that Frost has registered sort of preset, you know, uh, using the t-shirt methodology and then some some larger ones. And of course, you can always do custom. You could, you know, 109 pixels if you want uh, as well. But what that this does here is allows you to specify. Uh, and again, uh, there's some cases where you may not want to use or leverage the fluid typography, maybe smaller fonts where you're just like, hey, I just want this to be 18 pixels regardless. And so you can set that to false. 
Uh, and if you've got a larger font, uh, you can also sort of set the parameters here of, I want this to be 20 pixels, but as it goes, you know, the, the screen reduces, I want it to sort of fluidly adjust down to maybe 18. And of course, the bigger you get, um, uh, for instance, like if I'm using a 72 font size, maybe I want it to scale all the way down to 48. And so you can specify these things inside of theme JSON. Uh, theme JSON also, and this is a lot of where styles came out of the style sheet, uh, as WordPress blocks, uh, became more prevalent and there became more blocks as part of WordPress core and the styles and settings for each block that theme JSON supported. Uh, there was a couple of versions of WordPress where a lot of these things got support. And so just as an example, here is where you can specify um, like the pull quote block, right? You can specify the border you want on your pull quote. There's different parameters here. Um, this is where you can customize the typography. Uh, and if you're looking at the frost file, uh, right here, 295 down is where the theme registers all the styles for each of the blocks. Like, so this is the button block, you know, uh, these are the buttons, which is the group of buttons. Uh, and so for instance, again, this is where the code block, all of the styles are specified. And so there might be some settings here that you don't, that don't necessarily have an actual sort of GUI for, uh, and WordPress also, oops, allows you to specify sort of custom CSS for that block. Uh, and so you could just scroll through here and you can see, um, how this is set up, um, navigation paragraph, just all the blocks that are part of WordPress core. Uh, you can specify what those look like and how they come out of the box here. And then when you implement that into, uh, the, uh, the backend, then it gets applied these styles to it. Uh, Lisa asks a good question. Um, Bear with me while I show my bookmarks so that I can go grab this link. Um, uh, I'm going to drop a link right here because I've got this bookmarked. Uh, so this is a live um, a live page that uh, is, you can see these are all of the blocks. And so for instance, like the buttons block right here where it says supports, these are the things inside of theme JSON that you can specify. You can specify the block gap, the margin, the typography, and if inside of typography, which things. Uh, and so this is uh, almost the Bible as you're building a new theme because you can go into any block and say, hey, these are the things that I'm able to specify the styles and settings for inside of theme JSON. Anything outside of that needs to go in a style sheet. Um, and so... Uh, this is a fantastic uh, piece of uh, reference. So thank you for asking that question. And again, that pa this page is sort of real time. So when WordPress adds support for either a new block or new attributes, it automatically updates this page also. So it's never really out of date. Um, okay, so part of... Uh, the theme JSON is uh, not just the settings, but also styles. This is just some basic uh, for this is this would be like applied to the body, right? And so in this case, you can specify the background color or and the text color. Um, basically, this is white. The text color is black. And so uh, for if you wanted a gray background, you could specify that here or maybe navy text or whatever that just gets sort of applied here. Uh, again, theme JSON, there's some elements here that you can specify, um, heading, links, buttons, different than blocks, sometimes a little bit confusing, uh, but there are just more things that you can specify in theme JSON. Um, and then the typography section, this is basically also sort of applied to the body, which is just basically at the highest level. You can say, I want to use the primary font family for everything uh, across the board. And then like, you can go into an individual block basis and say, okay, well, maybe I want to use a serif font for my headings. You can specify that it's sort of like a cascading thing. Um, but this here, this typography section inside of styles is basically for, you know, anything that would get applied to the body. So, um, that's here. 
Um, Lisa asked, does the order of items and think JSON as much as style? Um, in that context, no, because it's specifically targeting blocks. Um, I generally alphabetize everything inside of theme JSON. So like if you look inside of like the styles or settings of the blocks, my blocks are just alphabetized. Um, so there's, there's less cascading there from top to bottom of a file. But like I just mentioned, you know, you can specify something like globally, and then you can go into the block sort of that serves as the cascade. You can say, I, I don't want my code to have the same color as the body. And so I go into the code and I can specify that. And that is a little bit more specific. So that then takes precedence inside of that block. Uh, so there's no top to bottom hierarchy here. Um, again, I always just alphabetize things because it's the easiest way to system it, systematize it. Um, and then uh, going through theme JSON. This is also, it's. I generally put this at the bottom again, because template parts is a T and is the last one to be set. Uh, and so this is where you would just specify the parts that are inside of your theme. So again, generally header and footer are always in every theme. And if you registered this, this then allows you to access it through the, the dashboard, the site editor. Uh, and so speaking of that, I'm going to, uh, take us there and kind of just go through what some of this stuff looks like. And so I'm going to open up the site editor. And so this is now the site editor. And let me back up and show you how to get here. If you go under appearance and you have a block-based theme and you click on editor, this takes you to the same place. So this is uh, what's called the site editor. And there's lots of things you can do here, uh, but I'll just kind of work my way through Um this. And so uh, let's start with styles just because this is an easy one. And so these are all the JSON files. I'll just click through a couple of them just so you can see. So this is the graphite style variation. And so basically the only thing I've done in here is I've reset the duotone filters to use black and white. Uh, and then I've reset the color palette. And so um, that's a bad example because it's, let's go green. So for instance, this hex code here changes from blue to this 006600, which is a green. And so you can set the color palette and the duotone filters. And all of those files, uh, if you click on styles, you can see, you know, basically this sort of kind of parses through some of the high level differences inside of the variation. And so, like, as I click through, you can see the primary colors for each um, things change. And so, this is the style variations interface. Um, again, a little gimmicky in a sense, uh, although there's definitely a use case for it. Uh, backing up to the site editor uh, templates. So everything you've specified inside of your templates folder, this detects uh, the main files that exist within the WordPress template hierarchy, plus any, for instance, blank or no title. These were the two custom ones. I'll click on this. Uh, you can basically see it just loads the header, footer, the post content, but there's no title. Uh, this is helpful if you want to build like a full width hero section and you don't want the page title to show. Uh, and so this interface shows you all of the available uh, templates. And so for instance, if I wanted to go in, you can see this is the single template. Uh, and if you click on that, you're now able to edit the single template. Uh, and so for instance, Maybe my theme sets comments as a thing. And I'm like, I just won't ever have comments in my blog. Uh, and so like I could come over here and I could go through and I could just like literally take that entire group out and hit delete. And if I were to hit save twice, my single post no longer will show uh, comments. Now, these changes that you make inside of site editor are done database only, which means if you want to revert back to what the theme does, in other words, these changes don't overwrite anything in the theme itself. Uh, so like if you were to hit save and go into where your theme is, your single post would still show the templates, but because you've done some changes here, it's now sort of gone to the database and using that as stead. Uh, so for instance, I'll just do that. Uh, and then you can undo it also. Like you can go up, uh, where is it? Where's Laura when you need her? There's there's ways to revert back. Uh, I'll do this the easy way. 
I'm going to go to templates. So I've customized that template. So this screen here shows you, um, hey, you've made some customizations. In the case I d d deleted the comments, I could just do this and hit clear customizations. And if I go back into it, now my comments are there again, because that's what the theme had. Uh, and so um, that is the templates part of this. Um, we'll go to patterns because this is the most comprehensive uh, part of it. Again, so what this screen does is it loads any patterns that are found within the theme. As you can see on the left-hand side here, there are, you know, these are the categories. Um, most of them are WordPress core. Like they, you just have to specify testimonials because WordPress kind of supports that. Uh, there were a couple instances in my functions file where I said, hey, WordPress doesn't have this, this category like pricing. And so I want to register this. And so inside of my patterns, I want to apply the pricing um, category to it so people can go and search for certain patterns. This is kind of like a navigation system. Uh, and so, uh, so template parts here, you see them under the pattern screen. I talked about this early on, how they're kind of the same thing. Uh, so for instance, uh, I've got my header here and what, because you've registered it as a template part, what it allows you to do is go in and customize it and then save it. And then it gets the new changes get used throughout the site. So for instance, if I wanted to add a site logo or some social media icons, I could do that in my header. And then when I hit save, because it's part of a template part, it sort of syncs that pattern throughout the uses uh, of the site. And so that's a really big, um, a big deal generally for headers and footers where things want to get customized. Like for instance, you could go in, this is the default frost header. Um, maybe I want to, you know, replace it. I can, um, another example, I'm going to just back up here and show you something really cool, uh, with WordPress. I'll just go into this. I'm in the single post template. See how this is purple. So this is the header template part. Uh, now, if I wanted to replace that, I could do this. And then what it does is it scans the theme for patterns that are called header. And I could go in and choose from any different, um, any different pattern. Similarly, uh, I'll, this is easier because there's more to choose from. So the footer is the same thing. If I want to replace the footer, this loads all of the footer patterns in Frost. Uh, so I could just click that. And then because it's a registered template part, it'll sort of save this change everywhere there's a, a footer. And so it's a really cool way to easily build a theme that has like lots of headers and footers for people to choose from and uh, allow them to easily change that uh, on their site. And then they can, of course, they've got the pattern in there and maybe you wanted to add some more text. You can just do some more things in it. Um, uh, yes, Laura is correct. 6.4 allows you to add um, a button into the navigation. So for instance, if you wanted to have like a link, a link, and then like a call to action button, um, you could add a button in that navigation menu. So that's exciting. Uh, I've seen the former Lisa a little bit. Um, I generally just a header and footer part and then just make a bunch of patterns. Um, you want to be able to have different headers displayed on various pages. You can do that. You have to create multiple template parts at that point. Um, an example of that, uh, as a good example, uh, going back to the Frost site. In the, the case of Frost, um, you've got a home page that's got like a dark header. Um, but like on inner pages, it's got a light header. So I actually have two header template parts. I've got a light version and a dark version. And so uh, I've created a home page where I apply the dark version. I use that template part. Uh, and so the, again, there's uh, many different ways to do this, but that's kind of an example of when you would maybe use multiple parts. Um, or maybe you have like um, uh, different sidebars you want to show on, you know, maybe you've got a membership, you know, you've got like a blog that you want like a traditional sidebar categories, recent posts, but maybe you've got an LMS part of your site and you want to use like a table of contents inside of a sidebar, you would then create multiple template parts and then call those template parts in depending on the page template that you're using. So um, it's a little bit maybe hard to follow, but those would be a couple examples of when you would use multiple parts. Um, okay. So 
last thing I want to talk through before um, I end, because I want to leave some more time for comments, uh, is the global styles interface. Uh, so if you're in any screen here and you see this little uh, icon up here, uh, this is basically the global styles. And so anything that you've defined in theme JSON can be sort of customized even further here. Uh, again, these changes go to the database, not back to the theme file itself, um, which is how it's all meant to be. So for instance, uh, I'm in global styles and this is my color palette. And now, of course, I'm, I think I'm using the purple. <laughs> I clicked the purple variation. That's why we see purple here. Uh, but you can go in and um, edit these colors by, um, you know, anywhere that that primary color is being used now in the site. Um, you can edit this and set this and you can add custom colors and so on. Um, just other quick examples of global styles, obviously typography. Uh, so this is how I've defined my body text. I'm using outfit. Um, but if I want to change the, you know, you can make all of these changes here in global styles. Uh, maybe for whatever reason, I don't like light. Maybe I want to use medium font weight throughout, and it just changes everything throughout the entire site. Um, buttons are another example. Um, you can change, you know, obviously the size of certain things. And so these are kind of on global basis. Now, in addition to just sort of these settings, you can actually also go in and specify um, all of the WordPress core blocks have the ability to uh, specify things as well. So for instance, let me just find like the quote block. Um, if I wanted to, if I, if I want all of my quotes to be, well, that's, you can start to see quickly how you can customize blocks on a global basis. Um, this is the same thing as if you were to change it inside of the theme, the theme is a little more permanent, but if you're just loading up a theme and you just kind of want to do some things on the fly and, you know, change the way things look, you can also do that here. Um, and you can see all of the support that each of these blocks allows you to control the, you know, all of these things. So if you want five pixels of spacing inside of your, your, your letters, you can. Uh, so Lisa asked global styles is for users and developers or both. I think it's generally more used for users. Uh, I've downloaded a theme. I want to just make a few changes. So as a user, it's easier for me to do that here than it is to go into theme JSON and make the changes there. If I'm a developer and I'm using a theme for a client site, I will more than likely download a theme. Uh, and this is a different workshop, but uh, fork it effectively and make it my own. That way I don't get any overriding update issues. Uh, and I will customize it either uh, directly in that theme. Or if I don't want to do that, I would just say download Frost, create a child theme. You can make all your customizations, you know, set your color palette and change some fonts and do things like that, create more templates or do whatever uh, in the way of a child theme. That way, uh, when Frost updates and it goes out to everybody, you don't lose your changes because you're using a child theme to make those customizations. So kind of in a sense, the child theme works as the same way as this sort of global styles thing is the only difference is these changes here inside of the editor get saved to the database. Whereas a child theme it's file-based. Yeah. I very seldom go in and customize anything here inside of global styles, just because I know how to and where everything is set in a theme. And so I just do it in the theme just because. Uh, okay. So Robert, your question is great. Um, so if there's a theme update, do global style changes persist? The changes persist, yes, because the, the what anything that gets changed gets saved and written to the database. Um, and so anything that gets changed is sort of taking precedence anyways over any updates that happen in a theme. And so like if you were to load Frost and change the color system from blue to pink and Frost updates, your changes will persist. Um, maybe there's a little bit of gotcha somewhere along the way. Um, but generally speaking, the unless you reset um, and you do that by way of going up here, 
reset to defaults, which means it wipes out every change you've made and goes back to the theme, in which case, if there was a change, that would then take precedence. Um, uh, Robert asked, yes, create block theme. And Laura, I'm going to ask if you don't mind trying to grab that link, uh, the create block theme. Uh, basically, the gist of that plugin is if you load Frost and then you load, thank you, Jeremy, um, and then you make a whole bunch of changes through this global styles, the create block theme uh, plugin allows you to basically in one click export it all out into its own new theme. So you could effectively take Frost or any other theme, load it, design your client site. And then this is a little bit more why this system all exists the way it does. Uh, you could customize it, header, footer, add a logo, change pattern, like do all kinds of things and then just export that theme and then take that and deploy that on their site. So you could like build it locally, hit export, and it'll take the base theme, any changes that you've made, it'll overwrite the create block theme overwrites the theme files themselves with your changes. Uh, and as if it were like its own unique theme. Uh, <laughs> totally understood. A lot of people use the create block theme. Uh, I know even Mike McAllister, uh, our old colleague at WP Engine, he built a theme called Ali. I think he built that theme using create block theme. So a lot of people will kind of design in the editors and then just click the button and it's kind of like a magic button that just exports it all into a theme. So um, let's see. So we are uh, just here on time. Uh, I am happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer some more questions. I know that there's a lot to digest here. Uh, the number one thing, uh, much to Robert's chagrin, I recommend doing, uh, whether it's Frost or, or whether it's any theme on wordpress.org, is to just download a theme and open up the files and see what people are doing. Um, there's probably some right ways to do things, probably some wrong ways to do things. Um, so you have to sort of use discretion. Uh, but that is how I learn even um, what's available in theme JSON. I, you know, sometimes I don't go back to that page I linked to earlier. I'll just see a theme doing a thing and be like, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. And so uh, I'll add that. Uh, in. And so a lot of the learning I've done in this is just literally just downloading themes and seeing what people are doing and how they're doing them um, or following along a project like Frost or Ali. Uh, obviously, theme authors do things their own sort of unique way. And so uh, things might be done differently here or there. But um, again, this is sort of a high level version of the block based theme system. Uh, I'm very bullish on it, especially with patterns. Um, Jeremy, who's on this call, he and I talk often about like different ways and creative ways to do things and use things like, is there a use case for child themes? Should we use variations? And so there's a lot of um, lot of digging through, as he says, themes just to see how things are done. So I hope this has kind of given you just a general idea of how this all works. Um, there's a lot more coming with WordPress, uh, more support for things and so on. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, so Stuart uh, links to an article I wrote about building a, like your own base theme. Uh, if you do client sites, I think Jeremy's done this where he's basically forked a theme and created his own theme uh, that he uses. Um, if you're a developer and you kind of understand how this all works, that's the by far the best way to go. Uh, you control your own destiny. You don't get things accidentally overwritten in an update. Uh, and you can kind of control and even remove things. Maybe you have a, you know, you you take frost, you fork it, you call it something else. Maybe you don't have a need for all the patterns that are there. You can just wipe them out and deploy it on a client site. Uh, and so learning how to work with and build your own by way of forking is easily the best way to do it. Uh, and so uh, I do it often. In fact, my powder theme is a fork of frost minus a bunch of things because I just wanted to do it differently. Uh, and so that is um, that is how I've done it. So uh, again, I'm going to do a quick... Sorry, I should just have this handy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop my Twitter link here. Um, Feel free to follow along. I, a lot of the stuff I do with WordPress is sort of documented just by way of all my tweets and stuff like that. 
uh, feel free to, to hit me up or follow or message me if you have questions uh, outside of this. Again, uh, within the next couple of days, we'll be publishing this on a YouTube channel. Um, and that is going to be the next question. And I'm going to do a quick shorthand to get us there. So this link here is the WP Engine Builders, our DevRel team. Uh, this is where this workshop will end up. So if you want to rewatch it or have questions or comments and all of that, feel free to do that or smash the like button, as the kids say. Uh, that would be appreciated. But uh, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Thanks for coming back two weeks later. Sorry it took so long. I was out last week. Uh, but again, I'm bullish on block themes. I'm very bullish on WordPress and the way it's all going uh, and I would love to answer any questions you have or help you build something. So feel free to just reach out. Uh, and again, this will be published on our YouTube channel. And this presentation has been brought to you by WP Engine, the company I work for uh, as part of our developer relations efforts. Uh, we're here to train and educate people on using uh, modern WordPress, the block editor, site editing, all the things. So... Uh, thank you again, and we will definitely see you around.